Hi, I'm Dylan from Velocity Tech Solutions, and today we're going to be doing a video on a motherboard replacement on a Dell PowerEdge 2800 server. So first things first, you want to get all your cables and uh, everything unplugged and get the lid off your machine. So we're already at that stage here. So first thing you're going to need to do is uh, take out all of the internal parts inside the chassis to actually get at the mainboard. So first things first, you want to take out this left riser, kind of pull up this blue tab. It can take a little bit of force, so if it feels like you're forcing it, don't worry, that's pretty much normal. Unplug all the scuzzy cabling going through and set it down. Next, we'll take out all the fan assemblies and shrouds. So you got that big one. There's a two blue tabs there that you grab at. Get this blue or a uh, black shroud out. Just pull up this with this little blue tab, and then that comes right out. And then uh, this last set of fans, which you pull up this rear tab, and basically it will unlatch there. Pull right out. Now the next thing you need to do is get the front of the server towards you. Now in order to do that, you need to unscrew this thumb screw right here. So you do that, and that will essentially unlatch this lever that allows you to pull the entire front towards you and gives you more room to work with. So next we'll uh, take out this uh, little black fan holder, this is actually where the fans are sitting from that fan assembly. Just pull up on this blue tab and then pull to the right and that should come right on out. Next, take out your power supplies. You can leave them in the chassis but just disconnect them from the main board. And lastly, remove all of your parts. So now we'll grab out our RAM, our RAID key. This is essential if you have an onboard RAID controller so you'll need to make sure you get that. And lastly, take out your processors. Now one thing with these uh, heat sinks is they get bonded to the processors very easily, especially after years of use. So in order to pull this out without pulling the processor out with it, you'll actually want to kind of wiggle the heat sink back and forth to kind of disconnect the bond, and then it should come up on its own. Lastly, pull up this little silver tab to release the processor. And now at this point, we should be all set to remove this board and get our replacement board inserted into here. So, what we'll do is we're going to pull up on this uh, single blue tab inside of the machine right on the board. And what this does is it unlatches the tray, then it pulls out towards you. And now, you just need to kind of wiggle the board around a little bit to get it through, and then it should come out pretty easily. Now, we're going to take our replacement board and the key to getting it in easily is kind of first point it down in the front so that the I.O. ports are all kind of going towards the rear. Then it should just kind of sit on the bottom of the chassis and then push forward and latch in place and now it shouldn't be able to move. So now, the next step is get all of our uh, parts back into the machine. Put your RAM back in the uh, same slots they were initially in. Also, make sure that you get your RAID key back in, as this, again, that is essential for your onboard RAID controller. Get uh, any other cabling plugged back in as well. And your processors. Now get the processors back in. We'll need to lift up the silver tab again. You'll want to clean off your processor and heat sink if you haven't already. Just a rag or something to get it kind of more or less clean. And then in order to tell which way to put the processor in, you'll actually notice on the socket there's a little triangle, and on the processor itself there's a little triangle. And that basically tells you what orientation the processor goes in. We'll do that. Apply a little bit of thermal paste, and we'll clean off our heat sink as well. Again, it doesn't have to be completely flawless, but you do want most of all the old residual thermal paste off of it. 
Now next, we basically just have to put everything back into the chassis. So this is actually a pretty straightforward process, basically doing the reverse of what we did. So first, get this little black uh, fan mount in. Get your power supplies back in. Get your rear fans back into the server. Should latch into place. The shroud back on. And then the fan assembly. Now this part can be a little bit tricky as there's two little uh, guides for the plastic on the shroud. You basically need to make sure that you get these ends into the guides. And once they're in, it should just lower straight in and uh, mount like that. And now it should be completely secure. Lastly, we'll need to get our riser back into the machine. So one thing to keep in mind is that you will need to get your SCSI cabling plugged back into the riser. Now depending on your configuration, you can either have one or two cables. If you only have one cable, you'll only be using the A cable. Which if you look on the riser itself, there's actually a little uh, notation there. This is the A SCSI connector and this is the B SCSI connector. So with one cable, we'll want to plug into the A SCSI connector. Get that on. And then just kind of line this up. On the uh, left side of the chassis, there's a couple little guides for these uh, pieces of metal. And it should just lower in and latch, and then just lower this lever. And then lastly, last thing you've got to do, just get this front piece pushed back in and screw it back on. So at this point, uh, you should be all set to get everything uh, plugged back in and turned back on, and it should boot up as if uh, nothing has changed. Anyways, hope this was helpful. Again, this is uh, Dylan from Velocity Tech Solutions, and visit us at velocitechsolutions.com.